Kia ora guys, Bird here. Welcome to episode 35 of Thorncraft 4 add-ons. In the last episode we got the advanced alchemical furnace up and running for the first time, which was pretty sweet. We also gave a little bit of a demonstration about how it works, and for those of you who are uninitiated, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is throw the items that you want to smelt into the middle here. They automatically get smelted down if you're supplying it with these, like we are at the moment. And in order to get the Essentia out, what you have to do is plug into these little ports here that are on the side. There are four of them in total, and that's how you get in out. But the problem that I noticed in the last episode is that they actually kind of do it sort of semi-randomly. That's a bit RNG-based. And so that's not particularly useful with my system, because you sort of need to control what Essentia goes in at what time. Otherwise, things are going to get stuck and clog the system up, and it's not great. <laughs> It's not great, and I was contemplating last episode about uh, tearing the whole system down, but I've come up with a little bit of a workaround as you can see over here. Now what we have here is a fairly simple system, let's go ahead and just explain what's going on. I've got some Essentia buffers, basically there's like an entire chain of Essentia buffers like daisy chain together, with each of them on the output side having the red band here, which basically means that on that side of the buffer the suction is zero which allows the next buffer in the chain to pull out of that. So it's basically what this allows is for like any type of Essentia to flow through like seamlessly and easily, and it's all good. I believe this is how Essentia tubes used to work uh, back in the old days of Thorncraft 4 before Asinor made the nerf to Essentia tubes and they got a little bit harder apparently. I've always just known the Essentia tubes to be the way that they are now, by the way. Yeah, so those come all the way up here like so, and then they come down into these Essentia valves, and they go into the jars that are right here. Now, I've only got six right here, and the great thing about this system is that you can actually expand it, which I'll get into a little bit later. So, the Essentia valves, are typically, they'll just be like this, they'd be open like this, and I've got them on this... Uh, hello. Uh, they know I'm here. <laughs> I've got them on the side like this, so that when I'm standing right here like this... I can actually see a little bit easier whether or not the valves are open, which is kind of nice, and that's why this guy is up as well. So, yeah, they, they stay open, allowing Essentia to flow in. Basically, it just free flows in from the buffers, and they land in there. And if you've got, um, you know, so basically this would fill up with one type of Essentia, then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. Now, I haven't actually uh, tested this thing out yet, have I? So there might actually be a little bit of an issue here where a second Essentia type will get stuck in here and clog the system up. That's a potential to happen, I've just thought of, but we'll see if that's a thing once I go ahead and test the system out for the first time. This might not have been planned well. And so once you've got your Essentias in here, then what you'll do is close all the valves up and then open up the valve that you want, and you'll also open up... Uh, this valve here, which is obviously right next to our little Essentia pump uh, buffer with two bellows on top of it, and that just plugs into our Essentia storage system. Fairly simple stuff. Because uh, it's got the red band on the back here, the suction from here is not affected. And I think this buffer can actually reach. Let's just quickly check with my tuning fork. Yeah, that definitely has enough suction to pull out of the buffer right there. Faux shizzle. <laughs> Man, that guy is kind of annoying me. It's the middle of the night, though. Yeah, so that's pretty much the system there in a nutshell. I haven't found a decent way to do it without uh, including one of these guys, which is a little bit unfortunate. It's the best that we can do, or at least that I've thought of, sort of in the short time span between this episode and the last one. If you guys have come up with a different suggestion, let me know. But I'm pretty happy with this, and as I said... Uh, we've only got six uh, jars right here, but you can definitely uh, expand this to be pretty much any size that you want. You know, we could add like 48, 53,000 jars if we wanted, as long as you had enough suction right here, that would work just fine. Perhaps what I will do eventually is uh, make a sort of a little extension to this island here, just to make a little cove uh, to put this thing in. But six, I think, is a fairly good starting number. The reason that I went with six is that most of the more complex stuff, in fact, pretty much everything that's complex has uh, a total of six aspects inside it. I've never seen something that had seven. Now the max is always six for some reason. Let's go ahead and put the armor on and get the jumpy jump back. There we go. <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh, quickly test the system out. And the way that we're going to do that is I'm just going to go through sort of typically what I would do to fill up in this uh, jar of Essentia. So what I would do normally is just go through each of the things, just kind of look at them and see if the top jar is empty. 
And the one that I want to work on here is uh, Perifolio because Perifolio's top jar is empty. So we'll go ahead and make about a jar full of that. So then what I would do is kind of, I already know what we need to make. I'd go in here and check what essentials that we need to for Perifolio. I believe it's a stone pickaxe. Yes, and it has two of them each, meaning that we need 32 stone pickaxes to make a jar of Perifolio. So let's head over here. Yeah, and I did not prepare any cobblestone ahead of camera. I actually do have enough though, uh, interestingly enough there. That's kind of nice. One cobblestone block left. Okay, and my wood. Let's go ahead and get some wood out for crafting. Press the V key because we're awesome like that now with our crafting focus. Go ahead and make a stack of sticks. There we go, that's everything that we need. And then what we need to do is pretty much that's that's pretty much it. We've got the materials that we need. Now we can head over here. To, what I used to do before the crafting focus is I'd have to go over there and kind of run back and forth. But now that I have the crafting focus, I can just pretty much stand right next to this guy. Oh, no, that's not right. And throw these things in here. And because we've got the, um, the storage enchant on there now, I put all three of them on there now, which is pretty nice. Uh, basically, we can close this and that stuff will stay in there, which is kind of nice. So... Just go ahead and make all that up, fill the inventory, go ahead and open up this chest, and let that guy go, and because we have an item grate right there, uh, the stuff coming through the hopper falls into the advanced alchemical furnace. Go ahead and make the rest of these, just four more to go. And that should be good to go. And it looks like what's happening now is that uh, these guys are filling up, I hope? It looks like uh, possibly... Maybe not. Oh, so I think what's happened here, suction is tattered right there. Yeah, okay, that got filled up. Okay. <laughs> what's going on here? Okay, the pedofoldio is filling up in here now, so it looks like the system's got to unclog. Hmm. Yeah, this bestia stuck right there. What's going on now? So that's, we've kind of got the whole debug things going on at the back here. Maybe this isn't going to work because there is a physical connection between these jars. Uh, <laughs> it could be a little bit more complicated than I thought. Okay, maybe if I do something like this. Well, let's, let's just separate all of these for now just to see if we can get this thing working again. Oh, there we go, the Essentias are filling it back up now. So we're filling up on Pedofoldio. Just trying to get the rest of it out of the system, I think. Right, so that's a jar of Perifoldio, and now this appears to be filling back up. Yes, that's okay. What other things did our stone pickaxes have in it? I can't remember off the top of my head. So now that we've got these two guys, actually all three of these, I think, can just basically be junked. So just go ahead and uh, get rid of those like so. That should hopefully sort the system out a little bit more. Maybe not. Oh no, there we go. I think that's everything. I think that's actually all the essential. We had two spare ardboard because we had 30 and 32 because there's one ardboard in each pick. So that appears to be that done. Because there's a physical connection between each of these, we are going to have that issue where the suctions are kind of not going to work nicely together. I didn't actually think of that. That is really inconvenient. We need to uh, think of a different way to work with that, I think. Mm, I'm going to have to think of a, something, a little something, something off camera. Now, because we only got one that's filled up, we can go ahead and uh, fill that up. But I guess, first of all, we need to actually open the Perifoldio tank. And I believe it's here somewhere. It's on the top. Oh, there it is. It's sand. So then I'll go over here, pick up a piece of sand, and equip my Wand of Equal Trade Focus. Go ahead and select that. Just make sure you don't get the sign. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet where I've uh, accidentally triggered the sign. But that's all good to go. It's probably a little bit slower than golems, but, you know, I'm happy with this system, to be honest. It's kind of just a little bit more controlled, kind of slow pace. I do live life in the slow lane. And <laughs> if you've made it this far into the series, and even just this far into the episode, you already knew that. Anyway, this uh, jar is filling up, and that appears to be pretty good. It's filled up, and that's job done. Now we've filled up on a jar of Perifoldio, and then what? If then I'll basically move on to the next jars and see how we're doing there. But I think we're doing pretty well now, so go ahead and be a tidy key. We close that up. 
I turn off the Petrofolio tank and the system has been reset. Hmm, there's going to need to be a little bit of working around uh, with the piping still. It's not perfect. I didn't imagine. I, I actually did I kind of expect it to be perfect, but it didn't end up that way because, you know, that's just the way life is sometimes. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of a quick break here and just uh, figure out what we're going to do for the rest of the episode. Welcome back, folks. I've had a bit of a read here through the Thormonomicon, and in particular, Thormic Tinker, and I've just noticed that there's actually something that we haven't really neglected to touch on very much here in the series. So the levitational locomotive, it moves to the left and moves to the right. So basically this guy, this block here, moves in between a beam, which is uh, generated by these two blocks right here. And supposedly the thing on top of this guy will move... Uh, it'll move the thing that's on top of it, and I'm hoping that that will actually uh, move things like chests around. I asked a few episodes ago if there was some kind of Essentia Acceptor in Thormcraft, where you would have, like, you know, that could be used with the Essentia Locus, for example, where it would, like, pull through from an Essentia Mirror. And it turns out that one of these add-ons, a Thormic, Thormic Horizons, I believe you guys were saying, uh, that mod does add that kind of block, but this is something else that could potentially achieve that same effect. So let's go ahead and get started by crafting this thing. We're going to need two of these guys, which is eight great wood, and two of those, uh, four glass, and two iron. So let's get started with that. So we're going to need two of those, uh, two of those, and two of these. And my great wood is over here. So eight great wood. I'm actually running a little bit low on great wood. Need to plant another tree. They're pretty easy to craft, especially with the hoe of growth. Just go ahead and bonk it down and chop it down and you've got three stacks of great wood. <laughs> and a whole heap of saplings as well. My glass is not in the redstone chest, bird. I believe it was four of it like so. Let's just go ahead and craft it here. Like that. Now, was it the iron air? They're not iron shards, they are air shards. I believe they were on that side. So that's two of those, very cool. Let's get the Thormonomicon, or rather the Scan Stand Machine out and follow rule number one of Thorncraft. Levitational Locomotive Relay, researched and good to go. Very sweet, they're kind of a cool looking block as well, aren't they? Yeah, they've got like glass on the side of like a great wood log. That, that, that does look pretty interesting. I could imagine that being used just in a, a an aesthetic, an F for an aesthetic sense anyway. Next up, what we want to craft is the actual levitational locomotive logo in between these guys. Looks like it's going to take an iron ingot, an obsidian tile, uh, two iron ingots, okay, as well as an arcane levitator. I think I have a few spare arcane levitators uh, dangling around. Just the one. Well, one's all we need. We're going to need a feather as well. Kind of a more of a precious commodity for me because I don't check out my chicken farm nearly as often as I should. And I believe my obsidian tiles are down here. Oh, there we go, there's one. And I think I got a whole bunch from tearing down a few eerie ruins. At least that's what I call them. So let's put the arcane levitator in there. And then, what was the actual shape of that infusion? So iron, feather, iron tile. Alright. Iron, feather, tile. Just get them down like so. And I should have all of that essential here as well, but we'll just do a quick uh, double check on that. Let's see. Thormonomicon, reveal to me your secrets. <laughs> Motus, Ordo, Crea, Contatio. I believe I have full jars for all of those. Yes, I do. Plenty of Essentia. Let's do it. The recipe is all working away. Very nice. I have particles turned off, by the way, at the moment. Oh man, we've still got a few lighting issues here. I think I've been having these sort of weird little lighting issues in the world. Uh, ever since uh, putting the Advanced Alchemical Furnace in, actually, that seems to have been what started it. I don't know if there's something to do with that. Or if it's just a Thormcraft in general. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know technical stuff. The Essentia is in the machine now. In comes the items. What was the instability on this, by the way? Moderate. Okay, moderate is pretty much we laugh in the face at. That thing is pretty much done. Wow. <laughs> that kind of reminds me of the uh, the HAL 9000 from Space Odyssey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Levitational locomotive. Now, that's got a lot of stuff in there, yeah. A lot of metallum. Kind of some, what you'd expect, to be honest. A bit of auto dough in there. Oh, I guess we used an auto dough for the infusion. 
and a bit of Maltus in there, yeah. So sort of the stuff that it's sort of made of, that's generally how these things go. And it actually looks like there's a bit of slime on the top here. Uh, do I have anything to test this out with? I think what I'll test it out with is a bit of Essentia here. Let's just grab a jar of Eter, or I, why not, from all of these spear enderpearls I've been burning down. Uh, let's just run over here to a blank area as well. And by the way, just while i am uh, got the Cusper, it's blade out, I put Sharpness 4 on there. I haven't gotten up to level 5 yet, so I can't put Sharpness 5 on. And the attack damage has been buffed up to plus 15, but you can see the speed is actually buffed up as well to plus 525%. But I'm noticing that we're actually moving at the same speed as the advertised 10%. So that appears to be a sort of a more graphical bug there at fix with uh, the Huskinator here. I believe that is the Automagy thing, so that'll have to be up to Pixel Picks, if he's watching. I doubt it. <laughs> we're a pretty small channel here. Anyway, let's get these two guys down. It didn't actually say that I need to power these with anything, so I'm assuming if I just put these two down, sort of an arbitrary distance, let's say, right there. Let's see if we can turn particles on and uh, get any kind of awesomeness out of it. Animation settings, uh, particles, bonk it all on and decrease the frame rate. Oh my word. <laughs> yeah, that is definitely working. We definitely have a system right there. So what happens if I put this down? Okay, so I've got that in the beam. Hello! It's kind of moving all on its own. Right, I was actually expecting it to move a little bit faster than that. It's kind of slow. Is it going to go back and forth automatically? Didn't really say too much in here about that kind of stuff. The levitator will be moved back and forth. Carrying the block on top of it. Yeah, so it's probably uh, just going to go kind of back and forth like that by the look of it. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can get the Jar of Essentia on top. All right. Now, is it going to be able to take it? It did not take it. So that is not a way of being able to transport Essentia. And that's the only real thing I could think that would be kind of useful for this. Because honestly, I mean... Another way of transporting Essentia, honestly, is just breaking the jar and having it be put inside of a minecart with a chest, which is, you know, faster than this. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, maybe it'll work with chests. Uh, chests were kind of a popular thing to start moving around a few years ago when Alaram managed to do it using frames in Red Power 2. Man, it's been a long time since Red Power 2 was a thing. Now, speaking of that, in Alaram News, Red Power is actually going to be its own game, from what I remember reading it on her blog a little bit ago. Let's just take a few things to throw in there in this chest as well to make sure that it is all hunky-dory. Hello, little guy, Hal 9000. Uh, let's see if we can uh, quickly bonk that on. Let's see if it's going to move the chest. Yeah, so it does move the chest, so it recognizes the data of stuff in there, but the Jar of Essentia is probably uh, too fancy for this little guy to handle. That's a little bit unfortunate. I really thought this would be a kind of an interesting way to move stuff around. Unfortunately, it seems to be extremely slow. Uh, if there's a way of boosting the speed on that, uh, be sure to let me know. There doesn't seem to be anything about boosting the speed here in the actual Thormonomicon, we basically just get two little paragraphs. Kind of a little bit hard to follow because it doesn't use the uh, correct terminology. You would say, uh, thinking, you know, it's, it's just not, I don't think it's worded very well, but yeah, that is the levitational locomotive in a nutshell. Not too useful, honestly. There are faster and better and more efficient ways of moving items around in this game. Sort of too little, too late, I guess you could say. The blocks do look nice, though. That is the one upside. Kind of got the evil howl and the good howl. Well, guys, that is going to be it for this episode of Thomcraft 4 with Bedros. Hope that you guys have enjoyed your stay in the world of the bird underneath the mesa biome. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for watching. Kia kaha, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.